The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunny Bay, which is uh, the leading website for the buying and selling of Bunny Williams-related memorabilia. Yes, yes, it is. I just bought. I just bought a uh, actual pipe that was owned by you on Bun eBay. Yes. Really excited about that. Really excited. It only cost me $350, but <laughs> I think it's worth it for a little bit of uh, bunny memorabilia. I actually mm. have a few I could put up on eBay. <laughs> there you go. It's homework time once again on the Popon Film Podcast. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Kindly cease your trolling and pay attention! Each week, the Pope on Film podcast... <gasps> That's us! <laughs> Sorry, I got excited. Each week, the Pope on Film podcasts assigns its loyal listeners homework in the hopes of bettering people, nay... Right-handed people everywhere. Yes. Sorry, lefties. No lefties. We'll tell you where you can buy your special scissors. Yeah, yeah. Good luck being president. <laughs> and this week, we are watching a cute 45-minute New Zealand television special as a cheap backdoor attempt to simply discuss my favorite folk comedy musical duo yes this week we're watching the relatively obscure 2006 made for tv rock documentary flight of the concords a texan odyssey this is fucking adorable i love them so much i i, I love them so much too i really love flight of the concords and it's it's Hard not to think that that's just them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I love I love their subtlety. You know, their humor is really subtle. That, like, sometimes you'll laugh and be like, was that a joke? Yeah. Was that just an, you know, because it's just so easy. You yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. I love them so much. And and this and they, this special they were they were up to snuff, you know? I especially like this special because Flight of the Concords are selling out theaters and like arenas and shit now. They did a North American tour in 2016 like a sort of a reunion thing. And it was huge, just massive theaters, these massive massive theaters and auditoriums and they're just selling out like crazy. So as a fan who's watching this 2006 TV special for the first time. Yeah. Uh, first off, shave your fucking gargantuan caterpillars on the side of your face. Because <laughs> they are disturbing and strange and no one likes them and they are horrible. And I think I just saw one wink at me. <laughs> shave those goddamn things from the side of your face, Brit. Like Britney. Yeah. Those are horrible. Get those off of your face. That's number one. And secondly, how odd it is to see an Oscar award winning songwriter and the bad guy from Men in Black 3 doing a concert in a tent on a rickety stage where you can't even hear them over the sounds of the Canadian tent. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, oh my god, these guys are huge now. Yeah. Oh, oh my god, the guy on the left won an Oscar. The guy on the right was a was just a bad guy in Disney's Moana. <laughs> like maybe you guys should be treating them a little bit better. So it, it's it's this documentary gets them at a very interesting time in their lives. It's almost like an origin or maybe a prequel. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So, 
I had heard a bit of a buzz about Flight of the Concords in Sacramento. They they were a bit popular because of their HBO show, which lasted two seasons. But it's important to note. It's important to note this now. They had a sh- the Flight of the Concords had a com a half hour comedy show on HBO BGOT before Game of Thrones. Yeah. And all HBO had in terms of popular shows at the time was Entourage and uh, Sex in the City. Yeah. And Entourage was shit. And uh, fuck Sex in the City. So not a lot of people were drooling over HBO at the time is what I'm saying. Yeah. The shit wasn't prestige. Prestige. <laughs> It wasn't prestige at the time, so there weren't a lot of people in America that were drooling over the freaking Flight of the Concourse. It was a cult hit, not yeah. a best-selling smash. Hey. Yes, Maxwell? Oh, you're going to bed. I love you. Good night. I will see you in the morning. Have a good day at school tomorrow. I'm going to cut off one of your arms. You want to say good night to the night, podcast? Bunny. Good night, Maxwell. Night. Night. Uh, you won't see them in the morning. You actually won't see them in the morning. Was that oh. just to me or to everybody? To see Destiny. Destiny, I was only watching the live feed, but I imagine she might hear this later. So, yeah, you could say goodnight to Destiny. Goodnight, Destiny. There you go. Good night, Maxwell. Destiny says good night and may flights of angels lead you to your rest. Um, so, yeah, uh, Flight of the Concords, they 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 were cult, they cult classic, not bestseller. Yeah. But what made me interested originally in Flight of the Concords was I was in Sacramento and I was randomly surfing on the YouTubies like you do. And then, boom, I saw the video for their song, Bowie. Yeah. Instant love. It is a perfect David Bowie parody. It is perfect. It is yeah. beautiful. It is amazing. I love it to death. I'm going to have to find that. So so based on that, I bought the entire season one of Flight of the Concords on DVD. I watched the hell out of it. The kids watched it. We fell in love with this show. As a family, we fell in love with season one. Yeah. I mean, and especially the episode that features Bowie. Brett keeps getting visited in his dreams by David Bowie. But the best part is, is that it's David Bowie from different times. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Brett. I'm David Bowie from the movie from the movie Labyrinth. <laughs> Say, hello, Brett. I'm 1970s David Bowie from from his Ziggy Stardust tour. <laughs> and then the different David Bowies give him different advice and. Like like early rock and roll, David Bowie tells him to wear an eye patch, and then when David Bowie comes back, he's like, "So, how did the eye patch work?" Oh, it didn't work good. I kept bumping into things. See, that happened to me too. <laughs> that kept happening to me as well. <laughs> so it's it's really really good. So fell in love with Fly of the Concords. Watched the hell out of season one of. Flight of the Concords, uh, Mother Uckas, it's business time. Yeah. I read somewhere. I have to be in bed, so you put him to bed or you handle her. I guess I'll handle her. Eleanor, how you doing? You want to be on the podcast? <laughs> Eleanor. Hi, Eleanor. How you doing? Come here. Come here. Yeah. Okay. So this thing right here is the podcast, okay? And we're recording it. Uh, Bunny is there. Say hi, Bunny. Hi, Eleanor. She's waving at you because she's used to Skyping with with video. Yeah. So 
Eleanor, say hello. Say hello. Say obliterate the proletariat. <laughs> Eleanor, say subvert the dominant paradigm. You want to look at it? Yeah, it's just a small circle with Bunny's picture on it. Not that exciting. Oh, you can keep waving at Bunny if you want to. Yeah, it's not doing anything, but I'm glad that you're happy. Yeah. I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're a happy person. Yes? Yeah. She's, she keeps waving at Bunny. Yeah. yeah, not working. Not working, girl. Say hi, Bunny. Say hi, Bunny. Hi. Hi, Eleanor. Say hi to Bunny. Bunny, saying hi to you. Nothing? Yeah. Oh, don't turn off the podcast. Okay? What did you just do? We're not adding people to the call. Aww. Nice try, though. <laughs> I'm such a make it up. Nice try. Yeah, trying to make it up. Are you trying to make it a party? Trying to make it a party here. <laughs> here, Eleanor. I know. Bye. I'm going to change your bed. Let me, I need to go to the bathroom the wipes. No. Okay. Although, so, although, think of the possibility of that. What if we, a- what if we just added a random Skype person to the podcast, and then just fuck um, with them a little while and then kick them out? <laughs> that would work. That would- <laughs> um. I read somewhere of just adding a random Skype person to the to the show and fucking with them for a while and then kicking them off. I just touched her butt a little bit. So <laughs> that kind of an read, idea, huh? <laughs> yeah. So I read somewhere, or maybe it was an interview. I don't know. But uh, the way they started out was that they were a comedy duo. They were doing shows in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, and of course, um. Uh, Jermaine, Jermaine Clemens was uh, doing a lot of comedy shows and stuff with his friends Reese Darby and Taikiki Wawaka Waka, yeah. who is now directing uh, Thor Ragnarok. And so they, uh, Jermaine and Brett, they were a comedy duo in New Zealand, and then they were apparently successful enough in New Zealand that they got a radio show on New Zealand radio. And so they got their uh, New Zealand comedy buddy, Reese Darby, who was uh, the head werewolf in What We Do in the Shadows. Yes. He had his own TV show called Short Poppies on New Zealand television, which was really, really good. Most people know him as the boss from Yes Man, okay. which is uh, probably the last watchable Jim Carrey movie. Yeah. Jim Carrey was like Jim Carrey. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no. He he was he he went to like the New York Fashion Week. He went to some fashion show and and broke out philosophy 101 on on some uh interviewer. <laughs> yeah, he went he he went nuts. Have you seen the video? No. I, what video it. is this? It's Jim Carrey being interviewed on the red carpet of some fashion show. Not even a red carpet, it's just a carpet. Yeah. Yes, yeah, just an interview at some um, fashion show for New York Fashion Week, and Jim Carrey shows up, and everyone's like, oh, hey, funny man, Jim Carrey's here. Yeah. So what are you doing, Jim Carrey? And he just goes off on this bizarre rant, and he's like, well, I just wanted to go to the to the stupidest, most superficial thing I could think of, so I came here because none of this is real and none of this makes sense. And he just goes off. And Jim Carrey doesn't exist. And Jim Carrey doesn't exist. Yeah. Really bizarre. I Apparently. I I I have yet to watch the video that's been going around about what a wonderful painter he is. Oh. Yeah, me neither. You know, I like like uh, for me, I just see okay, he's hit that stage of his career. 
he's a painter now you know yeah just like yeah. paul mccartney and um tony bennett and like a fuck million others and if it's yeah. not painting then a lot of them get into f- photography roddy mcdowell was big into photography other artists get into photography it's like i don't want to see your fucking paintings man it's just the stage of your career that you're in yeah, Leonard Nimoy was into photographing uh, yes, BBW Len- women naked in black mm-hmm. and white. That's right. Yeah. So, we should Google Leonard Nimoy. so I'm not impressed. I've seen this act before, okay? Yeah. And I yeah. heard what a genius painter Paul McCartney was. And his shit is fucking awful. <laughs> awful. So I'm not buying it. You, you could tell me Jim Carrey is whatever kind of painting genius you want, because I've 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 been I've been hurt before. Yeah, and so many celebrities do that. Like, oh, James Franco's new book of poetry. It's like really I, I, now I'm supposed to care about this. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay, whatever. So yeah, anyways, I'm, I'm going to be reading I was a wild angry hobo. You know, mm-hmm. just yeah. Hopping so, Love's railroad car. Like, yeah, so no, allegedly, no, that breaks the pretentious meter for me. Yeah. So allegedly, Flight of the Concords gets their own radio show and Reese Darby shows up to record on day one and he's like, okay, guys, where's the script? And they're like, oh, well, we don't have a script. But what is the show going to be about? We have no idea. <laughs> and so it was Reese Darby that's like, are you kidding me? We're on in 30 seconds. You can't just throw this on me. We don't have a show. We're about to be live. And, and then the show comes on and he just panics, goes... Okay, uh, band meeting. <laughs> uh, Jermaine, are you here? And yeah, he was the one who basically came up with the the concept yeah. of the show. So they made a name for themselves, uh, Jermaine and Brit, New Zealand's number one folk pop musical duo. Yeah. And this documentary catches them at just an amazing time because at this point in their career, they had just done a short but somewhat well-received HBO comedy special. So they were just starting to become well-known, but they were still widely unknown. So this special acts as a sort of prequel. But they were, but they were well-known in, in uh, New Zealand, right? Oh, yeah. In New Zealand, they were huge. But you can be yeah. huge in New Zealand and still not be known freaking anywhere. So it's kind of like the Russell Brand effect. You know, yeah. where where yeah. he was wildly, wildly popular in England, and we had no fucking idea who this guy was. Yeah, the same thing with James Corden. Yeah, because James Corden had a successful career in England for like a decade, and then came here to host a show, and everyone's like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Like, yeah, we had no idea who this guy was, and then he did carpool karaoke, which he originally did. For Red Nose Day in England. Yeah. And now everybody knows him and loves him. It's interesting to think that there was a period in time when people were saying, man, Stephen Colbert is just not a huge hit on television. Maybe we should replace Stephen Colbert and James Corden so that James Corden is on first and then Stephen Colbert. Because people just don't want to watch Stephen Colbert. Oh, wait, who just won the presidency? Yeah. So, yeah. Thank God for Stephen Colbert. The only job that we can confirm Trump saved. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, this special is a sort of prequel to their two-season HBO television show. In fact, speaking of their television show, there there is uh, two things that I noticed from the special that absolutely positively made its way to the actual two season television show. Number one, there's the concert that they do in the special. 
that we already talked about Mm -hmm. where they are doing a show that is specifically for New Zealand audiences. Yeah. But the tent that they're at is right next to the Canadian tent, which is super loud and huge and no one can hear the New Zealand tent. That definitely happened in a different form on the television show in season one. They, uh, New Zealand has a booth. Yeah. Like at a conference, but they, but the Australia booth is super loud and has bands and dancers and they're giving away like beer and whatever. And so they can't hear Jermaine and Brett on account of the New Zealand table. That definitely came from the special. Yeah. No, that's number one. Number two, um, the character of Mel is definitely taken from a real life person in this documentary. I'm 100% convinced of this. Uh, the, the manager in the move in, in the special. No, no. Uh, Mel is on the show. Mel is the flight of the Concords is only fan. Oh, okay. She who who went is, on to be in what the last man on earth, the last man, the last man on earth. And she's the voice. Uh, she's one of the voices in Bob's Burgers. She was in Thirty Rock for a while. She does a bunch of movies and yeah. stuff. She's very successful now. But she got her start as the vaguely sexually obsessed one and only fan of Flight of the Concords, yeah. who has a uh, homemade Flight of the Concords shirts and follows them around and is obsessed with them and wants to like bang them. Yeah. Esquire magazine once called Mel the sexiest character on television, uh, stating that there's something really attractive about Mel, about one woman that is just obsessed with you. <laughs> okay. That, that that regardless of how attractive the woman is playing Mel, Mel in and of herself is probably one of the most attractive characters on television because every man wants someone who's obsessed with them. <laughs> so Mel is definitely the fan they meet at the end of this documentary because yes. there's a woman and she has like a flight of the Concords website me and, and like she played it so beautifully yeah yeah she it's... played it so beautifully where yeah when, when she took out the picture of her kids yes I was like, uh, yeah, you know, there, it, it is a natural human reaction to be repulsed when anybody takes out pictures of their kids. Yeah. And it's like, here's Tabby. She's my oldest. And then here's Jennifer. And she did something weird. I forget why. And here are Jermaine's lips. That is such a male thing. Yeah. That is such a Mel move. That was definitely that is definitely where they got the idea from. Yeah. One hundred percent. And I love that so much. <laughs> anyway, I love this special. It's cute and odd and it's got wonderful moments. I, I like the fact that they they're being interviewed and yet they interview the interviewee during the interview. Yes. Yes, and I love that. that. Was nice. I love this, but it I was just this. a, but it was just a podcast guy. Yeah, it was like one yeah. of us. Yeah, you some know. guy in a podcast interviewing Flight of the Concords. I love the foot rub scene. Yes, <laughs> they are obviously out of their element, giving a uh, 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 vulgar female musician peaches a foot rub during an interview. <laughs> she's spread eagle on a bench getting a foot rub from Flight of the Concords and you can tell just by their faces how uncomfortable they are yeah. but my favorite part is when she's talking about how she was doing a concert here at uh, South by Southwest and nobody was really into it except for one guy in the audience and he was screaming and then after the concert I met him and you know who it was? Trent Reznor yes. and they have no idea who Trent Reznor is yes <laughs> I love that so much. And because it's a music documentary, of course, they make a big deal about it, you know, and there's a close up and it yeah. pauses. We panic here because we have no idea who Trent Reznor is. 
<laughs> Will she realize that we don't know who he? You know, like they're they're playing up the drama of this tiny little scene. He must be someone famous. Yeah, yeah. And which Kinky. which me and Jeannie feel a lot, you know, because we don't watch very many commercials. Yeah. You know? So sometimes you'll be on Crackle or something and that that'll show commercials and some other channels will show commercials. And you'll just look at somebody and be like I, I think they're famous. Who? Yeah, I don't have no idea. They they look like yeah. they might be famous. <laughs> And have no idea who they are. Yeah. We have this expensive, like, $80 art book that just came in. Yeah. And it's by it's by Russell Westbrook. And we're selling it like crazy, and everybody's calling, do you have the Russell Westbrook book in? And I'm like, no, sorry. It's a, you know, we just sold out, but we have a bunch more on the way. And all I know is that Russell Westbrook does the basketball. Okay. That's all I know. I don't know if he's in our team. What is even our team? The Thunder? What are you talking about? Basketball? Yes, Thunder. I'm out of my element. Okay. I don't sport ball. You don't sport ball? I don't sport ball. You don't sport ball? I sport balls. Huh? 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 Oh, the heck with you. I met Bella Lugosi. (laughs) <laughs> oh and bonnie kinky friedman kinky friedman kinky friedman i haven't thought of that name in a long time who is kinky freeman um musician author politician he wrote a series of really bizarre uh, mystery books yeah he, he 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 he's just a person like Joe Bob Briggs is a person. Okay. He's just a person, a really bizarre person. I thought for sure you would know who Kinky Friedman was. Not offhand, no. Oh, okay. I'll have to look up more info on Kinky Friedman. Was that the guy My- who was running for senator or whatever? Yes. Okay. Yes, that was Kinky Friedman. My favorite he part, He looked like though, Richard of- Boone. Have yeah. done will travel is the sign of a man. Yeah. yeah. My favorite part of this documentary is a tiny little scene. Uh, my favorite part is when, because this is a music documentary, they create fake tension between the band. Yes. By having Jermaine watching TV on the bed. I am wanting to get some time for myself. Yeah. Then Brett enters the room. And immediately starts playing the guitar. <laughs> Will this break up the band? Yeah. Love that so much. I also love the fact that they that this is the first time they've ever done a, 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 a documentary like this. So they keep interviewing e- each other. Yeah, yeah. I really, yeah. I really liked where Brett was sitting on the edge of the bed. And he's like, yeah, I always, I'm not going to remember it exactly, but it's like, yeah, I always, I always get homesick. So I bring this with me to remind me. Yes. About home and how I miss it. And I always carry, and then he's showing you different parts of it. He's like, yeah, whenever I leave home, I always bring this with me. And it's his fucking passport. It's just his passport. It's his passport. <laughs> I take this with me wherever I go, just to remind me of home. Yeah. <laughs> see, it's got my name here and where I'm from, and see, that's that's the logo of New Zealand. And that's what I. That's really what I love about them. Their the the their humor is very subtle. You know, yeah. where you yeah. really you have to like watch. The flight of the Concorde, so you're going to be missing a lot of jokes because they just like if you're sitting back passively, and he's doing that joke, you might not get that he's looking at his passport. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be the racist dragon. You're so hot, you made me sexist. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, bitch. Anyway, this is adorable. I love Flight of the Concords. Not a lot of people have seen this. It's literally recorded from TV. Not like, oh, I videotaped this. No, I pointed my camera at a TV <laughs> that was playing it. Yeah. Very different. But, oh, God, it's worth it. It's cute as hell. Flight of the Concords, a Texan Odyssey New Zealand TV special. It's on uh, YouTube. You should watch it. I think someone's knocking. Yeah. Uh, okay. And that is it for homework this week. And we sincerely hope that all of your eyes, minds, hearts, and intestinal passages have all been suitably opened. Ah, but don't think you're scooching out of here that easily, mister. What a, what a, what a weird word that is. Scooch. Scooch. <laughs> Scooch. It's a word we all know, but I don't think it's an actual word. Yeah. You know? I, that's not a word I use. Uh, I will use the word scooch, which is Yiddish. Oh, nice. Nice. You know. So so sometimes, if you're not familiar with the word, sometimes you would be able to say this. Honey, can you do something? The kids are really scooching me. Nice. Nice. Don't forget next week's homework. And for next week. Are you ready for this, Bunny? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Let me, okay. get, let me get mentally prepared. Okay. Um, Sometimes the homeworks can be rougher than the movies. Okay. Um, <laughs> just, just. Do you trust me? Some I'm, long, I'm, awkward I'm, silence. I'm, there, not, but I'm not sure really how to me. answer that. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. You're going to have to trust me, okay? Okay. Next week, we're watching an hour long Michael Jackson documentary. And I can't tell you why. <laughs> I can't tell you why yet. I'll be telling you why later in the show, but I can't tell you now. Okay? okay. Because the reason why we will be watching this Michael Jackson documentary is directly tied to a later section of the podcast. So just trust me on this. You'll in eventually learn why we're doing this for homework. We're just, I just can't tell you right now. So. What's the name of the documentary? It is a 2003 documentary from alleged journalist with finger quotes, Martin Bashir. Okay. In, cer in certain circles, it's infamous. It's called Living with Michael Jackson. And I would love to tell you why we're watching it, but I am a man of integrity. I have integrity. I have outtegrity. I just have a lot of tegrity. <laughs> okay. So, and where is this available? YouTube. It's it, it, YouTube. It's all over YouTube. I'll, I'll shoot you a link too. Okay. But it, just search. You can either search "Living with Michael Jackson" or "Michael Jackson Martin Bashir." Okay. It, either, either, or just "Michael Jackson Martin." It'll pop up. So Michael Jackson. Martin Bashir and more. That's next week on Homework Time with the Popon Film Podcast. Be sure and join us next week and do your homework, or we will cut off one of your fingers. Probably yes. pointer. None of this pinky shit. We are being <laughs> serious here. Serious, y'all. Yes. Okay. And cut. Yeah.